Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we are diving into the great abyss of black holes. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? We are drinking Backwoods Bastard. From the Founders Brewing Company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, these are these are oftentimes pretty good beers. So, Well, and i, I got to say, I've actually had this one before, not on the show, but just, you know, in my regular life. And Yeah. I haven't had it, but I love the bottle. The bottle is awesome. So we are talking about black holes. Uh, and i uh, got to be honest, John, I, 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 don't, I don't know shit about black Ooh. holes, so this ought to be interesting. Yeah, so, you know, uh, it was a couple episodes back. We were, I don't even remember what we were talking about, but we got on the subject of... Oh, we, we the were, Mandela effect. Mandela effect, yeah, and the micro black holes and all that. Anyway, we got on the subject of black holes and kind of chased a rabbit for a little while. And, you know, you, you seem to have more questions. So I said, you know what? There's plenty of philosophy to talk about in black holes yep. because there are plenty of unanswered questions in science that has profound effects on... You know, the universe that I, we don't have the capacity to answer yet. I've got to be honest. My, my whole understanding of black holes comes from the really bad 80s Disney movie, The Black Hole. So I've not seen that one. Have yeah. I haven't either. You've yeah. never seen that? Oh, but when I was researching, uh, when I was looking on YouTube and stuff, I did see one for like sale for two ninety nine. A black hole for sale for two ninety nine. <laughs> Sorry, the movie. The movie. Oh, yeah, okay. the Disney movie. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. All right. Has some pretty cool special effects for you know for a nineteen eighty four or five somewhere in there you know. But oh, that sounds so bad. It was really cheesy. It was one step up from Flash Gordon. We might have to. I haven't seen that. Yeah. We we might have You've to. You've never that. seen Flash Gordon. No. Nope. You're you, you have got to watch Flash Gordon. You have so, got. Do we watch, watch it before or after the Black Hole movie? Flash Gordon's better. Okay. Flash Gordon's All right, better. Cool. Cool. It, it is so terrible that you'll love it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. I don't even know what it's about, but I guess I'll watch yeah, it now. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I want to start. I want to talk about the history of black holes because we've actually, believe it or not, never visited a black hole. At least that we're aware of. Um, and so then. About you, the one at CERN. Well, yeah, yeah. that's why I say at least okay. that we're aware of. Yeah. Uh, but. Um, <clears throat> It, it, it raises the question, I guess, in my mind early on of like, if we've never seen one of these things, we've, we've probably seen them now, but, you know, years back, how did, you know, how did we know about black holes at all? So a few months after Einstein published his paper on general relativity, uh, a gentleman by the name of Carl Schwarzschild solved the equation that, that Einstein came up with for a very particular case in which you had a single point of mass in, in, in an empty space-time. So you had, you had just all your mass in one place. And when he solved this equation, he found this anomaly that would allow for, uh, we can call it, infinite gravitational strength. Um, and, you know, when Einstein saw this, he, he agreed that his theory was correct. It had been tested. It, it seemed to be correct. But even he looked at that this you know beast and was like, ah, it's probably just like this little mathematical you know quark. I can't imagine the universe actually does this. So, um, you know, he he kind of was even skeptical about these things at the time. We now are pretty we're fairly sure they exist because we've seen strong evidence of them. Uh, a couple of things that we've seen we have seen. Gamma ray bursts, so these really energetic uh, uh, bursts of radiation coming from points in the universe. Um, that if we calculate that it was just an explosion that got that energy to us, the explosion should have been more powerful than the amount of energy we can measure measure in the yeah. universe. It, it should have there there sh it shouldn't be able to do that. So then we come up with the idea of a stream. It's just like a laser of energy, and we just got this little bitty, you know, piece of it. And now the energy levels start to make physical sense, but it's still a lot of energy. And, and we, we kind of ask ourselves, what can create these little lasers of energy? Um, and the only thing we can come up with are black holes. Now, it is a black hole a, a uh, 
a collapsing star. Is that what that is? It can be. It can be. So uh, most of most black holes are where a star has collapsed. Um, and what happens is it the, the star collapses in. So as stars fuse, they create heavier and heavier elements in their core, all the way down to iron. Uh, iron is the most stable element. So basically what that means is if you fuse iron with anything else, instead of releasing energy, it absorbs energy. It takes more energy to do it. So because of its electromagnetism? I don't actually know. Uh, I'm, I'm not really a, a chemistry uh, uh, major. I can spell chemistry. Uh, but, but fusion. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm glad. I, I needed to be an expert on something. I, I just if, like, if, any, if anybody needs chemistry spelled, just, just holler at me. Uh, we will. But so, so every, every other fusing up to iron releases energy, which is why, you know, sun is hot, you know. Uh, but once you get to iron. But man's not hot. Man's not hot. Uh, that's why he keeps his jacket on. <laughs> I am. Um, hot, that is. So that's I, why you're not I, wearing a jacket. That's, that's right. That's right. I'm, I'm my own little star here. So I, I'm, I'm still confused about this. I, I, and are, are you getting, yeah, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm getting okay. there. So, so once you get to iron, um, it, it, the star becomes really dense. Yeah. And its own gravity starts crushing it down. And it actually crushes it to a point where the electrons touch the protons mm -hmm. in the atoms. And they all neutralize into neutrons. So you have this big bundle of neutrons. That's what a neutron star is. Okay. Uh, it is actually a bunch of neutrons packed so tightly that it is like a giant atom. Like just one big atom of neutrons. So then the star will explode. And when it explodes, you get this force that actually crushes it further. And it's that further crushing. And, and it's not, it's, it, it, it'd be more like an implosion than an explosion, right? That's what I was thinking. Well, it, it sounds like. So, what happens is there's a layer that explodes. Yeah. So, everything outside. But then the explosion is sucked into the gravitational pull, or? Well, everything outside of that layer pushes outward, but everything inside of that layer pushes inward. So, there's an outward layer that explodes out, but it, it when it does. Sounds like a nuclear bomb. Yeah. Yeah. And that's essentially what, what, what you're doing here, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it, I understand that concept. So. Yeah. So it crushes those neutrons down even further, and that's where you start to get the, the black hole. Before you move on, I want to interject just for our listeners here. I was confusing iron and fluorine. Um, I, I hate fluorine, it when I do that. Fluorine, I know, I, is really uh, electromagnetic. Iron is not. No. So I don't know what the reasoning is, but it's not I was that. sitting at yeah. the bar the other day having a conversation with a buddy of mine. I said to myself, you know, I've got to stop confusing iron and fluorine. Well, iron is F-E and fluorine is F. That's why you get them confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell, every every yeah. time. Every yeah. time. I know. Every, but, uh, every time I'm getting effed up, I get those things <laughs> messed around. But you're not getting feet up. No, I'm not getting so, feet up. <laughs> so, that's how you Just can tell them apart. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, anyway. So a black hole... That was so not funny. Go ahead. It is, is a really basic object. As, as, um, as awesome as these things are and as, as unintuitive as they are, they're actually really simple. They have two parts and three properties. Uh, the two parts are the singularity. That is the, the center where all the mass is. Uh -huh. And the event horizon. And the event horizon. The event horizon is the it's layer. Also, a bad movie. Yeah. Hmm? Never mind. The event horizon was a terrible movie. I didn't know that was a movie. Really? Yeah. You need to get out more. I, I tend to fall asleep when I watch movies, so yeah. I just don't watch a lot. So, the event horizon is the place where gravity becomes so strong. That light can't even escape. Yeah. So as we view it, we actually can't see the singularity. We only see this black darkness that is the event event horizon. You see, there, it, it looks a little bit like a, there's a lensing effect around the outside. So you'll see like yeah. bright light around yeah. the outside. You, you've seen pictures. Um, so those are the two parts. And the three properties of a black hole are its mass, its spin or its angular momentum, and its charge. So that is to say... These three numeric values are the only thing that distinguish one black hole from another. So if you had two black holes with the same mass, uh, uh, angular momentum, and charge, there, there would be no distinguishment between these two black holes. They'd be exactly the same. Kind of like modern pop music. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> or modern country music. <laughs> or modern country. Well, that's pop. That's popular music. Oh, fine. So now that we know a little bit about black holes and the parts, I want to talk about some of the, the interesting things that people kind of misconstrue. Uh, so first of all, I want to talk about the event horizon, because I, I gave a quick explanation of it, yeah. where, where, where light can't escape, but this is actually kind of a, a really convenient coincidence. That's actually not the fundamental of what an event horizon is. Now, in, in, in the movies I, I've mm-hmm. seen... This is the spot in. It, it's got to be right because in the movies, right? This is the spot where if you cross this, you can't. You can no longer escape the black Correct. hole, right? Correct. So it sucks you in and, and 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 you disappear into a wormhole or something, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, it's a spot. I where don't you know can... what a wormhole is, but I know that's what you disappear into. Yeah, and and it's even you know I I think some clarification is needed because this is the spot where you can no longer even theoretically do it. There are spots before them where you could escape, but you'd need to consume the energy of, like, a solar system to do it. Like, you would need a lot of energy, but theoretically, you could still do it. This is the point where... That's, a, that's a scary thought, because I think if there's any solar system in the world that's ripe to be, be consumed, it's, it's, it's got to be ours. So that's, that, 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 that's depressing. Well, you know, the really scary thing is how many of these things are out there. Yeah. Uh, so... I you know we're on a collision course with one, right? Well, sure. Like, ours is... Our collide black hole. with another yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But but not like before Tuesday, right? No, I Tuesday mean, we're maybe. good. Okay. I'm just but it's Wednesday. Like Wednesday. Wednesday's okay. iffy. <laughs> um, so the event horizon, it has a weird name. Uh, an event horizon. You have to ask, what do events have to do with this? Uh, the event horizon is so named actually because it is the point after which there are no events. No events happen past that point so if i were an outside observer because of time dilation and i was watching a monkey fall into a black hole what i would observe is this monkey falling and slowing down actually it would speed up to a point but after it got so close it would start to slow down and the last thing i would see even if i watched for an eternity would be the monkey frozen at the event horizon, because time would have stopped. Well, well that that and, and, and what you're seeing is light, and light can't escape too. So you, you it would be it would be stuck at that spot, right? Yeah. Well, and it, it's more that that's true. I understand how I understand the light idea. I don't understand the time idea. Well, so uh, time dilation. Um, speed of light is actually coincidentally only the speed at which light can go. The speed of light actually speaks to something much more fundamental about our universe. The speed of light is the speed at which two things, two people, two bodies, whatever, can affect each other. So, for instance, if we were in a court of law and a a murder had been committed, it would actually be a, a, a physical defense that I was the speed of light plus an inch away when the thing happened, because if that was the case, or the distance of light at a certain time, plus an inch, because if that were the case, it would be physically impossible for me to affect anything they did. It is actually the speed limit of causality in our universe. You're making my head hurt again, John. Okay, well... It's the speed limit for doing things. I, I understand yeah. what he. I, I understand the language. I just uh-huh. I can't comprehend the. I can't. The concept boggles my mind. It's, it, it, it philosophically I can't grasp this concept. Um, so 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 continue because I'm curious. Okay. I I, I want to get this. I want to yeah. grasp it. Yeah. So it, it's it's the speed limit of of causality. It's a speed limit at which you can cause a change on an, on another object or body or whatever. And what events? Yeah, exactly. And, and what starts to happen is mass, by its very nature, warps space and time. It stretches it. Bowling ball on a be- on a mattress. Yes, exactly. So, if if this were a big, uh, 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 that's where I keep my bowling balls. Yeah. If this were a big stretched out, uh, 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 what's the material they use in the experiments? It's just like a, a trampoline. We'll trampoline. use a trampoline. Yeah. Yeah. And you drop a bowling ball in there, and then you have some marbles, 
Yeah. And you roll it across there, it's gonna it's gonna yeah, create yeah. A, 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 a an orbit very similar to to what we experience, and and that's actually a very analogous like the things where you donate the coins. And yeah, and they like roll the, around. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and that's actually very analogous to what's actually happening with gravity, but it, it's stretching the space around it, and when it's stretching space, it's stretching time. So your second now lasts for a minute to an outside observer, or lasts for an hour. And as you approach this, this, this wall, your second now starts to last for a year, or a decade, or a millennium, or eternity. This, you hit an equilibrium here where a second, or a half second, or a millisecond is an eternity, and that's why time freezes. Then when we look at this, why don't we just see a bunch of shit there? So I, I, use, I use the noun, uh, sorry, the verb see. And, and, and that's actually a kind of an idealized use of it. That's assuming that we're not bound by our, our physical limitations of light. Because something else happens that makes us... What we actually see, if we were using our eyes, is the monkey fade into darkness and just not exist anymore. Because what starts to happen is the light starts to get stretched out itself and it starts to redshift. So we would actually see the monkey start to turn like this red hue and then the light rays would move into the, the infrared so we'd probably need like a camera to continue to see them and then further into uh, uh, you know radio wave spectrums and then it would just stretch out so far that it would be undetectable light. So I just had a really crazy thought. So the mantis shrimp can see like wavelengths of light, like tons of You're wavelengths. This up. No, okay. tons <laughs> of wavelengths of light. The mantis shrimp, coolest animal in the world, by the way. Um, that, you haven't seen me naked. That uh, anyway can see a lot of <laughs> <laughs> wavelengths of light that humans can't see. I would love to see something falling into the to a black hole from like using the sight of a mantis shrimp and see. The difference is there. Okay. Now, that's interesting. Yeah. I think it'd be cool. Talking about this this, this falling in, is it that yeah, you say this second stretches on? Does this mean that, that, that the observance of this second stretches on? So it, 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 it seems to last forever to the observer? Or if you are in that position, does it really stretch? So that, that, because if you're, if, if you're in that position, that's like eternal life. I'm yeah, cu- that's why I'm curious. So, so, so that's a really interesting question. That one of the ones that physics is still tackling right now. So, so let me give you another example that that kind of relates to this. And I want to ask, kind of turn the question back to you, and see what you think it means to live a second. So, if you were to ever travel at the speed of light, you would start to see time around you slow down and you would actually start to see space compressed this room would would seem in whatever direction you're going so if you're going this direction it would seem to get smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually when you hit the speed of light the entire plane or or entire area of the universe would compress into a plane you would experience all points that you're ever going to hit at once and time itself you would experience both ends of the universe for your entire trip Think about how much I could get done. God, right? Yes. <laughs> Anything you were going to crash into, the moment you crash into it and the moment you left would be indistinguishable moments. They would be compressed into... That would suck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, so then let me ask you, even though Einstein says your time should continue normally, yep. if your normal continuance of time is to experience all points at once, did time stop for you? Or was or time and... just that short? Yeah, I don't know. I don't so, know. so the, the, boggles my mind. That, that's an interesting question of what does it mean at these extremes for time to stop? Now, we know it stops for an outside observer. We also know that Einstein's relativity says you shouldn't experience time any differently. Your time should be normal. But if the last thing you experience time-wise, I mean, there's a point where time stops, did you experience time differently or did you run out of time? Was there no more time left for you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So, wow. so, it and, makes my head hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool. And, and, you know, th- there's actually black holes 
that we could experience this with. So um, much smaller black holes, you know, we, we've heard the, the, have you heard the term spaghettification? I have. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, so this is an, an actual scientific term for what happens when you approach a smaller black hole. And it actually, your feet start to accelerate faster than your head, and it rips you in half, and then it rips you in, it turns you into like molecular spaghetti. spaghetti. Yeah. But if you talk about supermassive black holes, like the one at the center of our galaxy, the, the, it, it, it's interesting, because if you consider all the mass within the event horizon, and then calculate, you know, uh, the area divided by the, the mass, and calculate the density, the density of that black hole is about the same as the density of water, surprisingly. Um, which also says if you got a mass of water that big and just stuck it together, it would become a black hole, right? Because uh, you, you can just get enough stuff together and it'll make a black hole. You don't actually even have to squish it. I think I've just discovered our, our next super weapon. Holy dicks. Yeah. If, if, if other countries come, I'm building a fucking weaponized black hole. Just water in space. Yeah, that's, shit, all, that's all you water. need. Is, a shitload. I don't know where we're going to get that water from, but yeah. we're going to get a shitload of it. Well, we don't have enough here. Okay, iron. Uh, we're going to use uh, iron. <laughs> well, we don't have enough here. <laughs> but, but because that density is actually so low at that, that huge mass, you could pass into a black hole and not spaghettify. There'd be some radiation issues, but if you could block the radiation, you could actually like just survive a trip. So then... It's one thing to say you were dead, so what does it matter to say, you know, did your time? Because you, yeah. you're not sentient anymore. It's a whole other thing to think about, I could survive this, so what happens to my time? Yeah, what, what happens then? Yeah. So, if you survive, where do you end up? Well, and, and so, so there's actually a theory... Uh, that there should be a Rosen Bridge at the center, but but here's the the other problem, right? The the Rosen Bridge wormhole for yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've seen yeah. that. Um, I watched Star Trek. I got yeah. this. This was one of my like favorite parts when I was studying this. Might exist at the singularity, but the tidal forces become much stronger as you get closer. So you would be spaghettified by the time you got to the singularity if there's a singularity to get to. But mm -hmm. the Enterprise wasn't. Wasn't what. Spaghettified. That was sci-fi. Oh, they had shields. Do you have shields? Yeah. I don't know. Make I, your anti-spaghetti <laughs> shields. Damn it. I don't know. I, all good sci-fi is that it has science at its root. I'm just curious. Yeah. No, it does. And and you know I, that that's one of the the questions where where we can we can kind of ponder because we don't know the answer to it. Um, but I, I talked a, a little bit earlier about how um, black holes are very simple things. And so this actually creates a problem for one of our most fundamental laws in physics. Actually, the law... It, Don't drink and drive. Well, it's, it's the law that, that is the only thing that allows us to... Apparently, it's not that law. No, it's not. That, that allows us to distinguish whether we're moving forward or backward in time. It's the only mm -hmm. thing we know of to say whether time's moving forward or backwards. And that's the second law of thermodynamics. Um, so the second law of thermodynamics says globally... Entropy must always increase. Yeah. Um, entropy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through a really quick rundown of what entropy is. Entropy just says that things tend towards states that cannot be, that, that have a lot of microstates that can't be distinguished on a macrostate. So let me give you an example. If I take quarters and I fill this room with quarters... A lot of fucking quarters. It, it is a lot of fucking quarters. I'm not sure, but I think I'd be rich. Yeah. And I and you have a black hole. <laughs> yeah. And I asked you to come look at this room, and then I took all those quarters and just randomly shuffled them around and asked you to come look at it again. Would you really be able to tell that it was different if the quarters were all rearranged? Right. Probably not. So that's a very high entropy state. A low entropy state is if I took all those same quarters, turned them all heads up, and ordered them from their year... You know, all, in order all the way through, you'd be able to look at it and be like, "Yeah, that's that." There's very few arrangements you can put those quarters in that will look like this. Mm -hmm. I could, still wouldn't notice. Well, yeah, only because you can't see the year on them. <laughs> yeah. That's because your eyes are bad. Oh, that's so true. So, so, true. so here's the problem that black holes present. I told you. Yeah. Uh, do we want to stop before we go into that and talk about the video? finish your discussion of entropy, and then we can. Okay. 
So I mentioned that black holes only have three properties, right? They have their mass, they have their spin, and they have their yep. electromagnetic charge. But the stars that made them up had a whole bunch of properties. Yeah. They had their heat, they had their, they had how many atoms are in them, what kind of atoms those are, they had charge and spin as well. So then the question is, when it made a black hole, didn't we create a lower entropy state without making higher entropy anywhere else in the universe? Didn't we break that law? Yeah, because where did it go to? Right. Where did the entropy go? So, so would, 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 would the logical next step be that following that law, they had to go somewhere, so there must be a, um, what's the word, a wormhole taking it there? Well, okay, so yeah, so so that's one of the arguments. I mean, you're 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 kind of doing science right now. Everybody's God asking. God damn, I'm doing science. Holy shit! Everybody's asking where did the entropy go? Because it actually breaks two laws of entropy. One is physical entropy. The other is informational entropy. So informational entropy says that uh, it, it's kind of like forensics. If I do anything, at least it leaves information in the universe mm -hmm. that we can then rewind time and say it and it's recover. The instructions to organization. Yeah, we can recover what happened. But black holes seem to delete everything that falls into them. I cannot look at one black hole and say three guys and a mule fell into that one uh, versus another one because it has three properties and three properties only. So it's kind of like my last iPhone. It just kind of deletes everything. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah. So then the, the, the question becomes, have we broken one of our most sacred laws of physics? Or do we just not understand where it went? Exactly. And so one of the proposed theories on this is that whenever something falls to a black hole, it imprints itself on the event horizon, kind of like what we talked about earlier, and it then is later... The hard drive. Like it, a snapshot. Yeah, is later released as entropy. Uh, well, there, there's a generational thing there. You say it's like, like a hard drive. I go, it's a snapshot. Yeah. <laughs> you know? There are three equations that, that kind of have confirmed this thing. I want to talk about it, but first... Uh, Y'all always make me feel old when we get talking, because I'm sitting here thinking to myself, this is... Uh, it's a Polaroid. I got you. I got you. And she's going, no, no, it's written on the hard drive. It's, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That, that, that's a very intuitive uh, 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 description. But before we get into why... <laughs> I, he pointed at you as if it's a very intuitive description. He didn't say anything to me. Well, you I, don't thought have my, to, I thought my snapshot was already, awesome. He already complimented your snapshot thing. It's fine. <laughs> Calm down, Mike. You don't have to shake the black hole to develop you it. You don't That's have why. to shake it to develop Careful, it. Careful, or I'm going to get you some Geritol. Bite my ass. <laughs> All right, so we are drinking... Backwoods Bastard. Backwoods Bastard. All right. Uh, also, just an excuse to say an offensive word. You're going to put a picture of this up there because this 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 bottle is awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah I, always, I always do. But you can also just like, yeah, put it's, this uh, over there. It's, it's absolutely fine. a phenomenal bottle, I and it I think anymore. that's a big deal. Who would like to start this discussion? Cool. Anna? You haven't started in a while. Why is everybody looking at me? I started like three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, uh, there's three uh, people uh, in the show. And <laughs> shut up. <laughs> um, I like it. Um <laughs> It so this uh, in case I'm not actually sure that we covered this at the beginning of the show. Um, this is aged in uh, oak bourbon barrels. I can definitely um, taste that. Yeah, and so it has a very woody taste on top of um, in on top of a, a stout base. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, it's woody. You get a lot of that kind of sweet kick of bourbon. Um, sweet, a little bit spicy. I actually have had this before, so I kind of already knew that I liked it. I feel like I'm cheating you're a little cheating, bit. You're cheating. Yeah, a little bit. You had an opportunity to have it. I'm just saying. Well, that, 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 that's true. That is There's true. There's been a lot of beers that I've had before we <laughs> rated it. That yeah. is true. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, it starts from a good base. Um, one of the things that I like about this particular, because we've had a handful of, of yeah. bourbon barrel stouts. Um, one of the things that I particularly like about this one is it's got kind of a spicy molasses taste to it that I feel like is unique and has made it more enjoyable. Now, that's a flavor that I like. It's kind of I a... I taste the molasses. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have recognized mm -hmm. it on my own, but I can, I can pick that up. But it's a... 
molasses is a kind of aggressive flavor, and so I could see not everybody really liking it, but it is something that I like, um, which makes this a more appealing beer for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give it a 3.3. 3.3? 3? Really? Yeah. I, I expected it to be higher from you. Okay. I like it a lot, but um, I, I think it could be improved. There's okay. some bite to it that I think could be smoothed out um, that I think is there unnecessarily. All so. right. John? So uh, one thing that she didn't mention, and I've heard this, and I, I've actually been here searching, trying to verify, and I can't, but I've heard that this is their Dirty Bastard uh, yes. stout aged in bourbon barrel uh, uh, bourbon barrels. Yeah. So I can't substantiate that on their website, but it, it makes sense. Uh, that mm. said, I really like what they've done with the aging process here. So uh, I found two sides that I don't like on the aging process. Really? Uh, n- not on, with this beer, but yeah. just with, with barrel-aged beers. One is when it is so bourbon-y it, that it, it almost it burns. Much, yeah. yeah, it almost burns going down. The other one is when you can't tell. You, you, you can't tell that, that the, uh, the, the beer was ever aged. This one has a nice balance. You can actually taste the bourbon. Yeah. You can taste uh, uh, the sweet notes of the beer. Uh, and it's got a twinge. Uh, whenever you swallow it, but it's not like overwhelming. It's not like taking a shot. Um, and I, I think they did a really good job with balancing out that that aging process. Uh, the beer itself is good. Uh, I think we've done Dirty Bastard before, and it did really well on, on the show. Uh, all that said, I'm going to give it a, a four. A four? Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, what well, was my turn, and uh, I'm sorry now because I, I, I'm going to rate this higher. Okay. I, I, and I think... Uh, I, I, I think y'all are going to think I'm crazy because usually I'm I'm, I'm lower. At least the last few months I've been lower. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like this beer. I will say that it's a sipping beer. Uh, it's not one yeah. that you that, that you turn Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Um, it, it's enjoyable. I think this is this would be a good cold weather beer. Um, oh yeah. But you know it's it's still got a good flavor to it even even you know in the heat of a Texas summer here. Uh, I'm going to go pretty high with this beer. I'm probably the high one of the highest reggae beers I've given in a long time. I'm going to go four or five for this one. I really like this beer. Um, wow. I really like this beer. Yeah. <laughs> you want to okay. know what, what beer advocate gave it? What did beer advocate give it? 4.35. So you were the closest yeah, on, the, yeah, yeah. on the ratings. Um, All right, fine. So. As it should be. Yeah. As it should be. There you go. So let's play our game. Uh, oh, right. Fuck update what, lawnmower. What, update lawnmower. Go ahead, Miss uh, Madam I, Mistress. I absolutely think it does. Um, this is going to get you laid. Uh, for a few reasons. First, it is a quality beer. Um, it is a conversation starter. So um, should you find yourself with any awkward moments of silence, this is something that you can use to kind of bring it back and make sure you seem interesting enough to bang. Um, <laughs> you are. Trust me. You, you, you are interesting, interesting enough to bang. Uh, and on top of that, um, you know, if you tell them a little bit about the where this comes from you know it, it's dirty bastard with a twist aged it it makes it seem very special and i think with we'll, the right people i think you're going to come off as a, a you know as a, a a very classy guy with the wrong people you're going to be a pretentious asshole well you don't want to bang those people though you, that's true that's true yeah so fuck them uh I, I think this is the kind of beer that could seal the deal for you though yeah okay so, yeah. It's interesting that, that you can get laid off 3.8 these days the people are just so <laughs> promiscuous so uh, we got we got fuck we got date now yeah date so uh, I, I would I would put this as a hell mary beer I've talked about my two first date beers this is this is that beer that you want to bring out uh, when you you know you're you're outclassed and, and out of your league but you're you're gonna throw one up there and see what happens now, that's not to say you can't bring it out for your you know in my league date but you know this is really kind of one of the the good ones you want to pull out for that. I, I would agree. Uh, lawnmower beer. This is not a lawnmower beer. I am going to be too drunk to mow your lawn if you get this to me. Uh, yeah, this is an 11 percent ABV. By yeah, the way. yeah. There, there, there's there's no way I'm mowing your lawn when, when you're through with this. Uh, uh, Whistle, quit shaking. I will fuck you and date you, but I'm not going to mow your lawn. <laughs> so uh, I, I think we hit this one right. Yeah. All right. So back to our discussion about fucking up Mike's world with black holes. Yeah, and, and, and entropy. So you know, you you, you kind of have this intuition of maybe. The entropy is, is stuck somewhere. Um, well, it makes sense. Yeah. So th- there was actually three equations that uh, this guy and I, I don't have. You're not about to read equations on the air, are you? 
I'm not going to read equations on the air. You've done that before, so I just wanted to make sure. I'm just going to call out some random numbers that nobody will know anyway. So if you, 6C plus... <laughs> so anyway, this guy looked at three equations, and he noticed that they were almost identical with a few constants different. And the equations were the amount of entropy that would be lost for an amount of mass falling in a black hole, the surface of the event horizon of that black hole, and... The amount of, of surface shrinkage as Hawking radiation comes off this. I'm turning into a 12-year-old boy because he said shrinkage and I'm giggling over here. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. that's excessive. So as mass falls in... It's not like he said balls. As mass falls, word is funny. falls into the ball, um, <laughs> as mass falls in, uh, an amount of entropy is lost that directly correlates to how much surface area is gained. And then right. as Hawking radiation... Uh, uh, releases entry back to the universe, the amount of surface area shrinks to exactly the amount of um, hmm. of entropy that, that was released back. I like okay. that one. That's, okay. that's mine. I, that's, I, I, like I understand one. that. Now, yeah. now, explain what the hell that means. So, so basically, um, what it seems like... Use black- small words with, with, with few syllables, please. Yeah, so, so, so here's, here's the crazy thing. What it seems like black holes are doing is when three-dimensional objects become so compact that the universe can't handle it. I'm just going to put it that way. It can't even. It can't Can't even. even. That they actually become imprinted on a two-dimensional surface. I know women like this. They just, they just, these three-dimensional women with When we say they're shallow, (laughs) that's what we really mean. They're two-dimensional. But, but it gets imprinted on a two-dimensional surface, much like a universal hard drive. Yeah. Trying to store the data. And it's the most compact information can be. So this makes a really interesting question for me. Are you about to go to the hologram theory? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go there the back way. If there is a two-dimensional universe on the surface of a black hole. Gotcha. Flat. Is there two-dimensional life? On that two-dimensional surface, is there a whole two-dimensional universe that we can look at but not really perceive because... That monkey. Yeah, exactly. Did he get... Would it only consist of the things that have gone into the black hole? I think that would be kind of a hodgepodge. But that would be like universe. There'd be be planets and everything all all here. And and wouldn't they be occupying the same same space? Well, no, I mean, so it'd be like, you know, you'd have a little square here in a circle and they couldn't go. Uh, but, but that's not right. I don't, I, I don't think. Explain okay. this to me, because if they hit that event horizon and it can't go past that, it would seem that all of this would stop at that spot. And you'd have all these planets and everything that was stopping at the same spot. Yeah, and getting spread out over. But they're not getting spread out. They're, Why not? They're, because they're stopping in the same spots, what you told me. And they're freezing. Well, okay, okay. Um, right. Monkey.mp4 turns into monkey.zip. Okay, so what, I don't know what the fuck that means. So uh, was it right? No, no, not at all. Not so right, what sorry. happens when a planet falls into this black hole? It actually grows. Well, that's even worse. Now it's taking up more space. Yeah, it does. But then the Hawking radiation comes out and it shrinks. Yes. But, but we're not talking about the radiation yet. We're just talking about the thing. Oh, so I thought as, he was talking about the size so, okay, of the black so, hole. Okay, so let's put this another way. Let's put this a completely. I'm really diff- trying here. Let, let's put this a completely different way. Please. I have a cube of information. It's only information. It's not a thing. Yeah. It's a three by three by three cube. And there's a number in each one of these spots. That's as much information as can fit in my cube. It's a lot of information. It is. It's actually uh, three times three times three, 27 pieces of information. So you can imagine if I took that three-dimensional cube and spread it out two-dimensionally, I would then require a lot more area than if I just put it in its most compact form of are, that. Are you describing our, our alternate producer's little black book? I'm no, just curious. I don't, no. I don't think so. Okay. Uh, but, so, as things, because you have to realize, the monkey, once it gets stuck on that event horizon, right? Yeah. At that point, it's not just like still a monkey. It's squished against it. It's like, and squished in a way that its uh, its fundamental particles are ripped apart. It's no longer a monkey. 
its energy. It gets absorbed into the black hole's energy and gets spread across that membrane. So, yes, the front parts of the monkey and the back parts of the monkey come together, but the membrane grows. It stretches out. It's one ugly-ass monkey now. It, it is. Well, it's a pretty black hole monkey. It's a beautiful it's a monkey. pretty black hole monkey. Yeah, it's a beautiful black hole monkey. Which, by the way, would be a great name for a heavy metal band. There's an black episode of the Orville that will actually just explain I the watched, whole two-dimensional universe I watched thing. One, one episode of Orville, and it was so fucking bad, I didn't watch any others. Oh, my God. It's a great to, show. No, it's no, fantastic. It's fucking terrible. It's actually really terrible. good. Terrible. Uh, so, anyway, so I, I guess the thing that's important here, you know, you talk about planets and monkeys and all things that fall into the black hole. Once they get to the black hole... They're not a planet anymore. They're just energy. They've been completely... Okay, okay. So, so it's like you're converting mass to information. Yes. I can get that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now it's just it information. Clicks. I got gotcha. you. And so the question is, if everything ex- exists on the surface of the black hole... But just, as, just in, as information. Just as information. Can that information interact with itself and eventually start to evolve into a two-dimensional... Can you bring it back? Well, we'll get into that in a second. We'll get into that in a second. But I just want to ask, can it evolve and become different information? Can the information can change? Can it reorganize itself? Can it, can it interact? Right. Of course it can. That, that, that's, that's what our computers do all the time. And if it can organize itself, can two-dimensional universes exist on the surface of these black holes? You're about to break his heart. Oh, I'm going to go deeper. Okay, you're about to break his brain. Okay. Now I, let's, I don't have a heart. Go ahead. Now, these, these black holes... You think. You're going to feel it in just a second. These black holes have a perfectly smooth surface, right? Okay. Yes, they do. <laughs> I'll um, accept that. I, um, I trust you imagine, on this. Uh, imagine now another black hole, and I, I'm going to stretch the limits of science, but just for illustrative purposes, coming into a smaller black hole, coming into a bigger black hole. Okay. You can imagine an instant where there would be a hump. On that black hole as it was entering, right? There's always a hump whenever you enter. <laughs> yeah. So, if things started to fall toward that black hole, you can imagine there'd be an event horizon here where they would get stuck. Because they can't come out. They can't come further back. So they would hit another wall. So that would be like a two-dimensional black hole. And there would be this ring, this line of one-dimensional space... And then if we put another one on there, you'd see two dots. I mean, it, it would compact the dimensions down further. So here's the question. If the surfaces of black holes can compact dimensions down further and contain information that might be organized into some kind of thing, and also string theory has predicted up to 26 dimensions that we for some reason can't perceive, is it possible that our entire universe exists on the surface of a four-dimensional black hole. What? John, do you know who the Secretary of State was for, for, for Theodore Roosevelt? Yeah, of course. No, no really? I, don't, I don't. Okay. <laughs> I just want to let everybody know that, that, that John Hay was the Secretary of State for Theodore <laughs> Roosevelt. I'm letting you know this so everybody knows that I'm not a fucking idiot, but I don't understand what you're saying. Yeah, he knows these things. You know other yeah, things. I, 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 just, I make funny I, jokes, I think. I felt like I needed to share something there so people didn't go, that guy Mike's a fucking idiot. I understand. I'm just over here laughing at hump. Well, let's, <laughs> let's look at what our, how our universe has behaved. Uh huh. There was a big bang. We came into existence with a bunch of energy suddenly explosively created. He's actually describing my sophomore year in high school. <laughs> The it was universe a big bang, and then we came into existence with a lot of energy. The universe started to stretch itself and stretch itself, and we've actually seen an acceleration that's stretching. We explain it with this thing called dark energy that we don't know what it is. Yeah, haven't observed, haven't identified. Yeah, could it just th- be? Yeah, that the surface of this black hole is stretching out. Therefore, we observe our universe stretching out. Yeah. Resist the temptation to make a bad sex joke here. Go ahead. Wow. Good idea. But, I mean, does that make sense to you? Yeah, it does. It absolutely does. Um, I guess I've seen enough instances where um, something we have yet to be able to observe, um, but by our calculations and our other observations, um, seems to have to exist. Um I mean, I've I've seen it kind of happen often enough that I, I can buy that. 
Yeah. I can buy that it's a possibility. Yeah, so, you know, if, if we go to hologram theory, hologram theory actually s- states the opposite. And, and and I don't want to get too deep into this because if your head's hurting now, hologram theory will make your head... I like, know what a hologram is. Not in this sense, you don't. I don't. <laughs> so, because what they're saying, what they're saying when they talk about hologram theory is if all the entropy of a black hole can be imprinted on its surface, maybe that's how our universe operates. Mm-hmm. And maybe what we think of as three-dimensional space doesn't exist, that all the information in the universe is imprinted on its surface. Yeah. I can understand. I, 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 really? That one's easier than no, the... No, I, 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 yeah. I, I can't explain it, but, I, but, but listening to the idea that... I, I it's guess kind of like the brain in the jar. Well, what I can find it, find it with is, it, to or me, simulation. you know what I'm going to associate with that. That comes back to the cave, cave theory to me in a lot of okay. ways with the idea that everything here is just a reflection of something real. Yeah. Fine. Isn't that really what that is, though? I mean... Yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. It is. And, and you know, they both really kind of talk about the cave illustration. One talks about this is what there is, but we perceive it wrong. Yeah. The other talks about there's a world outside of ours, and the cave is yeah. our universe. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You know? There's a perfect, and we are and we don't get the perfect. We yeah. get the imperfect. I can get that. You knew I had to bring the cave. I haven't brought the cave up in weeks. I'm proud of you, too. Or I was. He's still my favorite, ever. <laughs> I know. We need to revisit the cave again. Cause I want to have an in-depth discussion about his thoughts on genitals. <laughs> In the cave? Fine. Okay. Yeah. I think we should do a live show from a cave. Fine. Mr. Claustrophobe. Yeah. Well, the, at, at the entrance of the cave. Oh, the entrance, okay. <laughs> Not too deep. So Mike doesn't like to go too deep. Uh, this has, this has, this makes me think. Let it go. That had multiple let meanings. Let it go. Sorry, go ahead, John. Th- this makes me think a lot. If we are either on the surface of a five-dimensional black hole or imprinted on the edge of the universe, you know, we observe that the universe is accelerating in its expansion. Okay, five-dimensional? Yeah, five-dimensional quick, universe. Quick, g- 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 give me five. Because I'm, I'm lost. Give you five, like, uh, just what are the five dimensions? Because I'm lost. Well, time and four spatial dimensions. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So if, if there's a five-dimensional universe outside of ours and we're on a black hole, we're on the surface of it. Um, I love I said, give me five, but he puts his hand up. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> you guys are missing out if you're listening to this instead of watching the YouTube. Yeah, I'm yeah, just saying. Yeah. yeah. So... So if I, I hope he intentionally was being funny and wasn't thinking I was asking for him no, to give me five. I, I was... I, I didn't know what you were asking for. I knew that wasn't it, but it's all, all I had. <laughs> but it sounded right. Yeah, sure. Why not? We'll go with that. But if this is in fact the case, you know, we've we've witnessed the acceleration of the expansion of the universe, right? Is that just because of outside factors? And will we eventually hawking radiation off? I mean, maybe our current acceleration of the universe is not some constant in the universe. It's due to outside factors outside of the four dimensions we're, we're stuck in. Mm-hmm. Um, just a thought. I don't, I don't know that science has an answer currently to this, but... My head hurts. So, um, something that I came across while I was actually kind of doing some research on this was a really interesting look at the timeline of our universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think that... From this perspective, it makes it because you know you have people. Well, you know they say that they think this is happening and they think this is happening, but nobody really has any proof, and they're kind of angry that we don't have all the answers already. Um, but I get that. Yeah, but when you look at the history of everything we're even aware of, and how long it's been around, and how uh, how long then humans have been around, and how long. Uh, civilization has been around and how long we've actually been kind of exploring these sorts of things it makes sense to me that we don't have all these answers yet right. and makes it that much fucking cooler that we're in the time when we're trying to figure those things out like we are here at the time when we're proposing theories about how it is that things outside of our our globe our globe uh, it, it, <laughs> work? It, it's a globe, <laughs> or a ask, donut. Those are the only options. Let me no, ask no, you this, Mike. It's a globe. 
You know, on, on that on that note, I, I've heard even on the show, I've heard you guys say, you know, I wish could have been alive in Columbus's time when there was new exploration we had. Are astrophysicists the new sure. explorers? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, they are. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Anybody who like yeah, reminisces absolutely. for the old times, and I think it, they'd be fun to visit and everything. But like, we're in a really cool fucking the, time yeah, right now. The good old days weren't that good. Yeah. Right. But if you're a historian like me. I understand why somebody like me would say, I'd like to go back and see that. I don't want to live there. Yeah. I would love to visit. But I'm a historian. I'd love to see it. With like a gas mask so that I don't get the plague. I don't want to go back to (laughs) then. Well, not that specific time. I want to pick when. 1824, Age of Jackson. That's what I want to go back to. Uh, So I have one more question on here. and then I think I could be president in 1824. God. Where would we be? Anyway. We would own fucking Canada. I'm just saying. Point. Do we want Canada? Do we? Want, we could want like if Canada. What would Canada had been be like us, if we'd have conquered it in eighteen twenty four? Come on. Yeah, if Canada had been us all this time, I think it'd be better. We'd have more maple no. syrup. And, and Mexico. That is true. We'd have Mexico and Cuba too, just so you know. Hitler almost had a bunch of places too. Shit, I am. This is why I shouldn't be president. <laughs> One of the things that I realized is that um, as like. There are these characteristics that seem to be inherently, are stereotypically, I guess, American. Yeah. Of like, we're the best, we're the only ones that matter, we're the smartest, and we do all the things better than anybody else. We are the new Romans. And I realized in kind of uh, these, first of all, I had a friend yesterday who was like, oh my God, you guys saw a UFO. Not how that guy sounds at all. You need new friends. <laughs> and uh, it, it kind of got me to thinking about... Um, was it one of your friends that threatened to beat me up? No. Okay. But he probably would if he listened. Okay. But <laughs> If you're not aware, uh, Anna has a has a fan club that, that regularly threatens to kick my ass because I'm mean to her on air. No, oh, they don't do it anymore. But... <laughs> But anyway, um, I realized that, like, so that's kind of the American stereotype. Um, And with this idea of maybe life elsewhere or uh, black holes and kind of what's going on there or what's going on anywhere else in the galaxy or the Mm -hmm. universe, like, Earth is just a bunch, is, is the American stereotype. Like, we're overly cocky that we're the best out there and that if any... Fuck yeah, we're America's team. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but but no, like I, everybody who's not American on the globe thinks that they're like better. I've got to be but honest. Really, I as am, a as a species, we we very much are just the American stereotype as sure, a whole. Sure, sure. And, and and I so am fuck the all stereotypical you guys for thinking American. that you're better. I am the stereotypical American, so I, I I'll go with that. So I had one more question on here, and then we can either close it out or if, if we have right, something else. can continue to rant about global exceptionalism. Yeah, sure. We, we could, we could go that. back to global exceptionalism. Um, that Texas exceptionalism. Go ahead. So I, I talked a little bit about entropy. And entropy is really interesting. And I mentioned this earlier, but I'll, I'll, I'll kind of reiterate. The increasing of entropy is the only thing that we know of that distinguishes forward time from backward time. And you can kind of see this if you ever watch one of those videos where they did the whole thing backwards and then played it in reverse to get some cool effect, mm-hmm. like, you know, w- whatever the thing may be. Um, it, it doesn't necessarily look that different, the universe going in reverse, than universe going forward. Except entropy will decrease. That was a sexy sound. I'm, I'm just so sorry. You know. Um... But black holes actually have this really interesting property <laughs> with Hawking radiation being being released. They take very organized systems, whether they be planets, stars, monkeys, whatever they are, and they release them as thermal radiation, which is the most indistinguishable like version of of anything, right? Okay. Here's my monkey brain. Go ahead. You know, I've got monkey brain. Uh, very, very primitive. So... Is it like a fax machine where it takes something, it breaks it down into a bunch of data, and then it puts it back together somewhere else? It, it doesn't put it back together. 
Well, we don't know that if there's if, if there's that 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 bridge that we talked fair about. Enough, it does, enough. doesn't it? We we have no evidence that it puts it back together. Does that make? We don't. Okay, okay. You say we have no evidence that it put back together, and, and, and I agree with you. But what we have is we have a fundamental rule that it violates. And if that is a fundamental rule, doesn't it have to put it back together? Unless the rule is wrong or only applies to the things that we've been interacting with so well, far. Yeah, so, so, then it's not a rule, it's a suggestion. Well, so, we think it's which a rule. Which is possible. Which you, is possible. Yeah. So, so, either, so there's a few options. One is the rule is wrong, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two is we don't understand black holes and it doesn't violate the rule. Um... Uh, and and then under two, there's a bunch of subversions it, of that. Yeah. If the rule is right, if okay, if we right. accept mm-hmm. that the rule is right, and, and, and we're pretty sure the rule is right in our plane of existence. Right. The rule is right here, mm-hmm. whether yeah. it's right somewhere else, we don't know. Right. But if we accept that the rule is right, then we have to accept that that's what's happening, right? Well, but it's breaking it down and, and it's coming back as something somewhere else. Well, so 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 yeah, so that's interesting. So uh, fax machine. Well. A fax machine. A facsimile is a, a replication of what was before. Yeah, it takes and something, what we're it breaks not, it down to data, and then it recreates it as something else. It recreates it as a copy of yeah. the same thing. But what we're talking about here, it's not a copy of the same thing. It's it's well, kind of breaking it down and putting it out as something else. It, it's it, like if you set a, a fax of a rose it's a and bad it came copy. out it's as... It's a bad fax. And it came out as a puppy dog. Not a, pa- a f- paper with a puppy dog picture, but a puppy dog. Well, okay, let, okay. let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Because I may be misunderstanding what you're asking. You're a person. Yeah. You die. And then you decompose down into, like, dirt. Yeah. Would you consider that process like a fax machine? No. Okay, well, then I would say no. This is not like a fax machine. Okay. Because what it seems that it does is it absorbs it all as energy stores it on the surface, and then releases it as thermal radiation, just as heat. It breaks it down to energy. Okay, but uh, so, so, so the rule that still applies is that nothing is destroyed. It's just, it's just converted. It's converted to a different form of energy. and yeah. It's still there. Yeah, and entropy increased because a monkey has much lower entropy than just heat. Okay, I can see yeah. that. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. I can understand that. So, by the way, you've crushed you've crushed me because in all the movies they can go through the black hole and they can come out somewhere else. They come and that's out what I a white doing. hole. Yeah, yeah. A white hole. They come out a white hole. I've never heard that. So a wormhole is a black hole and a white hole. I've never heard that. Because a white hole, and a black hole stuff goes in. It sounds remotely sexual. I'm just saying. <laughs> and a white hole stuff comes out. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> God damn it, Mike, stop it. <laughs> And they said, please, please, please clip that. Please, they clip said that. that this can't happen because the gravity is so strong in the middle that it would just collapse and it would break and you would have a white hole and you'd have a black hole, but they wouldn't actually be connected. So you okay. couldn't actually traverse them, can, can, except there's this thing that they <laughs> that they uh, I really want to stop using the term black hole and white hole. <laughs> I really do. I feel so dirty at this point. There's this theoretical thing called exotic mass. Matter. Exotic well, matter. If you got a black it's hole like, and a white hole, you know. It's exotic, exotic matter, which has a negative and mass. It matters. Which has a negative mass. So the gravity at the center can't exert upon it, and so it keeps it open so that you can travel. Okay, okay. But it's not, it, it's all theoretical. Okay, so, they have so, no evidence that that actually is so, a real so, thing, so, but it's a theory. Okay, thank you. It, it's a So stupid guess. primate brain Mike is wrong in, in thinking that you could enter a black hole and use it to like travel travel somewhere. Yeah, yeah so the, the idea of the, of the Rosen Bridge and all that, actually, uh, it, it, it's interesting because it is the same type of mathematical anomaly that the idea of the black hole was in the first place, right? It's this mathematical anomaly that arises in the numbers. And sometimes when we see these mathematical anomalies, they turn into surprising and real things like black holes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they really are just mathematical anomalies. But I understand the logic of if you accept the idea that that matter can't be destroyed, that, that it makes sense. I I understand where they where they come to that idea. Well, so so 
that that idea is actually but I understand not complete. I, I under, yeah, yeah. It, it's it's not destroyed. It's changed. Yes, I get yes. that. I yeah. get that. Yeah. But I understand where the logic comes from. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I see why Star Trek is wrong with their teleporters. So, here's my question. Did you notice I said Trek? I did. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Are black it was painful? My Trekkie brain appreciates that. Are black holes Track. just universal maximum entropy machines? Universal maximal entropy machines. Yeah. 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 And it's really funny because if we look at life, so so we've asked the question on what is the meaning of life? Uh huh. Sex. Life acts as an entropy uh, uh, an entropy increaser too. We take really organized things like food, we eat it, and we radiate it away as heat. And poop. And poop. And poop. Well, poop poop has lower entropy, but and even activity. that gets reabsorbed and eventually turned back into heat. Yeah. We actually feed on the entropy around us. Sure, yeah. sure. And sure. the byproduct is is high entropy, which actually creates a real problem because eventually the universe will kind of run out of entropy. So entropy is limited. Which there's the expectation that the universe so is not if, if you're listening to six pack philosophy right now, just go ahead and kill yourself because John has, has taken off all meaning of exi- of existence. Uh, Don't do that. You and have, if you want to, call somebody. Call somebody or yeah, send please, us a message. Please. You have more entropy we'll to go to consume. There's plenty of it, and uh, the universe we will needs not run you. out of en- entropy. In do your not lifetime. kill yourself. I have a list of people that you could. Uh, ne- never mind. Go ahead. But anyway, so that was. If you're gonna providing. do it. <laughs> no, we're kidding. We're kidding. That, that was kind of. That kind was, of. We're was definitely kidding. It's kind of my list of theories and philosophies on black holes. Uh, just Sorry, I kind of. I, got, I, I kind of like took that dive on on wormholes. Yeah. That was my favorite part. Yeah, I, I've, I've got to be honest. I was I was nervous about this topic yeah. because I I looked at it and I, and I, I read some yeah. on it and all I saw was science and you know my 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 primate mind doesn't do science well. And I went, oh, what the hell philosophy is this? But there's a ton of it in here. Yeah. There's a ton of philosophy. So I appreciate you uh, bringing this to us and making me listen to this. Uh, I, I learned a lot. It was, it was a lot of fun. Book. It was a lot of fun. And I think even my monkey brain kind of got something out of this. Yeah. So, um, Which, by the way, I think that should be my new nickname is monkey brain. <laughs> monkey brain. I'm fine with that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So was that all you had, John? That, that's that's everything I had in my notes. I'm I'm fine to, awesome. to fill questions. It was or... Entertaining. So, do you have any questions? I've got lots of questions, but I don't think John can answer them at this okay. point. I th- so, uh, this was a little outside of what I we like normally. I like your picture, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Very very yes, black. Yes, we have something new uh, in our backdrop. This is not only going to be here for the black hole show. Uh, I like it, and I want it to be in our backdrop all the time because it's pretty. And I should probably clean it now that I've fingered it. Um, <laughs> you should always clean it after you finger it. So anyway, uh, this has been a little outside of what we normally do. Um, but if you like it, let us know. If this is the sort of thing you want to see us doing. We'll do um, it. We'll do it. In addition to our regular philosophy and uh, social philosophy and political philosophy crap that we do. Um, if you don't like it, also let us know and be like, hey, bitches, you said philosophy. I want philosophy. Get back to it. Yeah, yeah science is it's natural philosophy. That's the original philosophy. name. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, but anyway, um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. Hey. Because we have. What can they do if they want some of this swag we have? Go to teespring.com slash sixpackphilosophy. Uh, you can also support the show by going to patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy. That's right. Um, find us on all the social media by searching, and I'm going to say this again, Six Pack Philosophy. Uh, and, John, if they go to our Patreon and join us, what do they get for that? Uh, I mean, there's they get a, to bang Mike or nap with me for $500 a month. You can, you can bang, month. bang me or nap with Anna. So you, you can do I'm that for, for, five, for 500 uh, But for as little as $10 a month, you can actually watch us do this show live and get early access That's to right. the YouTube. Uh, and if you just want to give a dollar a month, uh, we will send you a koozie every year. We would appreciate it. Uh, yeah. And, and it I'm will just help saying, us. If you decided to throw enough money, you could probably bang all three of us. At the same time? Well, I'm just saying, uh, I don't know if it's the same time, but... Uh, that, that could be interesting. I love it. I All love three it. of us 15 minutes at a time. <laughs> you, you, you're making an offer that a random stranger could bang all of us, but we're like... Wait a minute, but what? But not each other. <laughs> like, random strangers is fine, but each other? So... Oh. <laughs> Anyway, we have standards, <laughs> right? And we're all outside of that standard and, and prices. Anyway, 
So that's how you can get some, <laughs> some swag. That's how you can follow us. Uh, we do love to hear from our listeners. We've actually recently done two uh, yeah, yeah. listener requested shows, and we will do. I think of the craziest thing you can. Ask us to do a show yeah. on it, and we probably will. Really. Uh, By the way, our see show, what you can get us to talk about. Our show on Therians we did had had a, had a lot of positives. Yeah, it's been uh, interesting. Got a really nice comment the other day. We appreciate yes. that. Thank you very much. So. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've had fun, and we hope you have, too. Cheers. Cheers. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 